Hi, today I'll be showing you how to configure NAT rules on the Checkpoint Firewall. So before we get into the configuration of NATs, uh, I have uh, put together some lines on why we need NAT. So I won't uh, read the following slide in front of you, uh, to you uh, but if you need a brush up on that, it's there if you need to. And at the very bottom is a URL I've put together and it gives you a bit more description on uh, network address translation. Okay, so let's look at the different type of NAT options within the Checkpoint Firewall. There are three types of NAT rules in Checkpoint. Uh, so the first one is Static NAT, which is used for public facing services such as email and web. A private IP address is translated into a public IP address and can translate from both sides of the gateway. So I've got a network diagram here representing three networks. So this is the internal side. This is the DMZ where all the public facing services sit. And this is the external side of the network and you can see a user on the internet here so in our example of static NAT if a user is to connect to a website on the network uh, the user would come in and hit the public IP address of the gateway uh, and the firewall will NAT it to the private IP address of the particular web server The second example is dynamic NAT, which is used for hiding the internal network behind the public IP or another public IP address. Uh, it dynamically assigns source ports so it knows where to uh, send the connection back to the um, you know, which internal host it belongs to and is used as outbound only. So connections are only initiated from the internal side of the network. So in our example, uh, here, here's the internal network. Now, this could be a network of tens of thousands of hosts. And whenever a host needs to connect to the internet, it would uh, be natted to the behind the public IP address of the gateway firewall, or it could be another public IP address uh, on the external side of the firewall. Uh, and you can clearly see why we are saving on IP addresses. So all the, these hosts on the internal side of the network are sharing a single public IP address or it could be uh, a, a couple of, of IP addresses if the internal network was absolutely huge uh, we're talking you know 50,000 plus hosts and the third type of NAT in checkpoint is the manual NAT which is used for advanced NAT requirements such as when using port address translation or when uh, natting a range of IPs it can be used for translating services and destination port numbers so going back to the network diagram an example would be if you've only got one public IP address to use on the external side of the gateway uh, and you need to um, nat two services and share the single public IP address between the two services so a web service HTTP server and an SMTP server um, so what you would do is if a user was to come in hit the public IP address the public IP address the firewall will NAT the public IP address to one of the servers depending on what the source port is sorry the destination port or what the service is so for example if, if the user was uh, browsing the web and it came in to the public IP address um, the firewall will have a look at the service or the port, HTTP or port 80, and know it's for this particular address because it's web. If it's an email, it would come in. The firewall will NAT it based on uh, the port number, which is port 25, or the service uh, SMTP, and it will know to NAT it to the SMTP server address.